It's finally here. A response more hyped up than the Avatar sequel. Logan Paul is addressing the massive three-part investigation conducted by CoffeeZilla, exposing CryptoZoo as a potential scam. Logan Paul was not too happy about that nomenclature, so he made a video pretty much doubling down on everything about CryptoZoo never being a scam while admitting to hiring criminals for the team and trying to poke holes in CoffeeZilla's credibility but without ever providing evidence for why CoffeeZilla is no longer credible. It's not the best response, but it was enough to win over a lot of people's trust somehow, even though Logan Paul never actually addresses any of Coffee's claims with the evidence Coffee provides. Instead, he fixates on a couple of small things, none of which actually contribute to disproving anything from CoffeeZilla's video series or his year-long investigation, and instead just kind of serves to assassinate CoffeeZilla's character, and then throws the condom on the floor and says he's taken CoffeeZilla to court. I'll see you in court, bub. He makes it clear that he will be pursuing legal action against Coffee for this investigation, so overall, very curious to see how this all plays out from here. I'm going to show you his response video as well as me going over it, because like I said, he never actually addresses any of the evidence-backed claims that CoffeeZilla provides from his investigation. He doesn't do anything to prove his innocence. All he does is talk about CryptoZoo's coming. I'll make sure of it. What's he gonna give us? Well, so far it looks like he's given us just barely enough nutrients to survive. Like, I'm still hungry. CoffeeZilla released a three-part series on an investigation that spanned the course of a year. Logan Paul gave us a seven-minute appetizer that he's trying to serve us as the entree. Like, come on, there's there's no meat on these bones here. Let's ride. CoffeeZilla, I watched your three-part series called Investigating Logan Paul's Biggest Scam, and like many on this platform, you have successfully used my name for views and money. While you're- I immediately already hate that start. CoffeeZilla's entire brand is all about exposing scams in the space. You yourself commended him for his work ethic and his like actual great content and you have immediately wiped your ass with that phony statement. What an awful start. We are seven seconds into this and it's already a terrible start. You've already exposed yourself for one lie already. You called yourself a fan and how Steven always gets it right. Until now. And now all of a sudden it's all about views because of your name. Yucky. For views and money. While your work used to be impartial, your addiction to clicks has clouded your judgment and you've made very real errors with very real repercussions. Coffee, Ooh, you took a like shot what? at my reputation. Uh, so in this video today, I'm gonna be defending myself with facts, something that you have gotten in the habit of twisting as you continue to morph oh. from an investigator to a gossip channel. You see- Interesting. Uh, Cause he gets like the whole story, even from the people he's exposing. He directly talked to, like, Ami Otalio for Paradox Metaverse and stuff. I am curious which ones he's referring to. That's a bold statement. Do you have anything to back that up, Logan? Is that in here somewhere? Spoiler alert, no. This is just a plot thread with no closure here. He says that he's been making very real errors as he's morphed into more of a gossip channel, yet provides nothing to substantiate that claim. No evidence. He just says, he's getting things wrong now. Source? I made it the fuck up. Trust me, bro. That's the source. Like, that is laughable. You can't state that. You can't make that claim and have nothing to back it up. Besides this situation, which you're claiming is wrong, what else? You're saying that now, as he's gotten more popular, he's no longer impartial. He's more of a gossip channel that's completely fine with getting facts wrong. Can you show me something that proves that statement from you? You didn't. Do you have anything? Or are you just pulling it out of your asshole? You see, CoffeeZilla tried to work with law enforcement in the past, but his work was described as not anchored to truth and often speculative. He is a lopsided journalist with an agenda, and he's nothing more than the keem star of crypto and finance. But as opposed to just telling you, Whoa. I'm show you some of the four discrepancies that I caught. Oh, that's such a big claim. Whoa, the legendary double fist into the butthole of wild claims with no evidence, huh, Logan? A bold maneuver. Now he says that he tried to work with law enforcement, but was often deemed not anchored in truth or the work was speculative. Do you have anything to back that up anywhere? You making that statement piqued my interest and I feel like I did more investigative work on me just being curious than you did for your whole response video because I reached out to CoffeeZilla and talked about some of the claims here. 
And CoffeeZilla was as confused as everyone else when you talked about this one, about wanting to work with law enforcement. According to CoffeeZilla, he's never wanted to work with law enforcement, never has tried to, and in fact, the only time he's ever had any communication with law enforcement is when they approached him to hand over some of his evidence on a case. So I don't know where the fuck this is coming from. Code fled to Switzerland and held it hostage for a million dollars. Well, his name is Zach Kelling. Surely as the internet detective that you proclaim to be, you would know that he spent time in prison for multiple felonies, one for aggravated mm. robbery, armed robbery at a liquor store, and the other for- Sounds like a good member of the crypto zoo team. the legal process. I can see why you kept him anonymous. Who will be calling Z here. I guess among many things, had not only an agenda, but a fondness for orange jumpsuits. Why is he on your team? In fact, him omitting that detail makes you look a little more competent. Now that I know you hired a fucking criminal to work on the project, I have even less faith in you to make good choices. This doesn't discredit anything. <laughs> At all, actually. This just makes you look worse. Or did you just hear what you wanted to hear and moved on? Because even if you're lying to yourself, Steven, you still have to believe it. And I know what you're thinking. What type of idiot would work with an unsavory individual? That is what I was thinking. Kelly? I guess that's what I get for trusting the team that I relied on to vet and manage Eddie's hiring process, who has turned out to be a professional con man that I mm -hmm. have since learned fooled billionaires, the Mormon church, the owner of the New York Yankees. And hey, who'd you learn that from, Logan? Which, uh, which source did you learn that information from? Surely it wasn't Steven, since you're talking about how untruthful and how often speculative and wrong it is, so... Surely you didn't learn that information from Steven, right, Logan? Invest in a cryptocurrency was allegedly responsible for two rug pulls before you interviewed him. So either you missed that, oh. or you knew it and failed to let the public know. Why? Because it was a clear sign that he was also untrustworthy. You seemed one second of research would prove that to be false, as you can definitely hatch eggs and even breed your animals. Click on that. Oh, we got a duck. And Whoa. as you pointed out in your fine print, cross hatching was available on ETH at one point, but you perpetuated the opposite as truth with your chest out basically nothing worked and by the way guy almost all nfts are just pictures oh it's just a picture and surely it <laughs> so, what... so the project sucks so it's nothing new like you proposed it is just again jpeg on jpeg and that's it it's not a game you're right nfts are all worthless pictures but you were proposing a game in fact your friend was like oh you're not even talking about this like a project this is like a game and your exact words was, it's a game. It's a really, really fun game. But now you're just here saying, it's just pictures. Which is the point everyone was making. It's not a game. It's more just NFT JPEGs that are just stock images. You're contradicting your own sales pitch. So I don't know about this, this guy. This guy could very well be super untrustworthy. I'll take Logan's word for it here. These were interviews with um, alleged victims of the rug pull. Now, even if this guy, and I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt here, even if this guy is a very shady character, he could have still been scammed. It's not mutually exclusive, because he's not the only one. So among the thousands upon thousands of people you scammed, one of them happens to be a douchebag scammer as well. That doesn't discredit the whole point, though. There was like 12 other people he interviewed as well, but even the non-interviewed people, there were tons of victims. Coffee used him as a spokesperson. No, he had like 12 other people there, and he just had his testimonial as part of it. Right? So why have you allowed the illegal recording of Jeff's phone call without his permission? And then more like an internet criminal, post it online. And it was interesting, it was like... Crypto King Jake stole $6 million. True or not, we had already removed him from the team when we realized he- Con Man Eddie, lead developer, stole $1.7 True or not, when we learned he was a bad actor as well, while myself and Jeff sold nothing and made nothing as verified through investigation and the blockchain. Jeff, Logan's manager, to my knowledge, never sold. Neither did Logan Paul. I repeat and illegal. I suggest you use the money you got from pumping your Patreon to hire a good lawyer. You're gonna need it. And maybe Ooh, we could have- Oh, he's throwing it down! I, I guess to piggyback off that, uh, why didn't you update the community on the project? Why didn't you talk to the community that brought all of this to light who felt scammed for the last year and has lost tons and tons and tons of money on it? Why have you only ever sent three Discord messages, one of them right before posting this video? We, this is very easy to continue going back and forth with the finger pointing. 
If it's not a scam and you really are working on it, why the complete radio silence with your community? And even if he was, you can still say, hey, we're going through legal trouble, but we're still working on the game. We're not a scam. We're working on it. And what about the handmade asset or the handmade um, art, which was proven to be stock photos? That is he going to address that? This is just too short to address all of the like actual evidence that CoffeeZilla submitted. Talked about this. If you had reached out to me personally, not what? my manager, Jeff, who is not me, me, Steven, but the first time you did was on Christmas Eve after you released your series so you could rely on false statements and unreliable people used recklessly. That's fine. You've denied <laughs> my invitation multiple times. You're still invited. It can be a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, if not, we're going to handle this ourselves while we continue to build CryptoZoo, and I'll see you in court. Amen. Damn, that was big. Seven minutes of fury, but not a whole lot of evidence on specific claims, just more broader things. So you hired two criminals because you didn't do any amount of background research. Why is there faith in CryptoZoo? Why should there be going forward? How about here? It's coming. How? Have you replaced the two criminals? But yeah, he did just po he posted in the Discord for the first time in a year right before releasing that. So he has three messages in the Discord. One of them was yo. And then the other one was I'm drunk or I'm sober right now. So he hasn't really been keeping the community up to date with what's going on, which is why for a year now everyone's felt like they've been scammed. Zero apologies, zero direct addressing victims, and zero accountability. Logan accuses me of not reaching out to him directly until December 24th, but doesn't mention I reached out over a year ago prior on Instagram. Not the optimal platform to get a response. But I also don't know how you're supposed to get in touch with someone like Logan Paul either if it's not through his manager. There's no direct means of communication that I know of. It was only after a year of not getting a response that he began calling his manager for answers about CryptoZoo and got comically stupid responses. So now you're, you're admitting like you just didn't see it. Which, I mean, it's through Instagram. It's not optimal, but like... It's, it's not hard to believe that he wouldn't know how to get in contact directly with you if it's not through your manager. That's the whole point of a manager. He could have used Twitter. He's blocked on Twitter. Logan blocked him. Plus, Logan Paul's DMs are closed. I can't, I can't DM Logan Paul. No, I don't expect you to see every DM, which is why I reached out to your manager and explicitly said I was trying to reach you because I hadn't gotten a response. I mean, them's the receipts. I mean, yeah, Jeff read it, <laughs> so... <laughs> Oof. What kind of people is Logan Paul hiring? Literal criminals. He admits to it. <laughs> he hired a fucking criminal. Well, two of them, actually. Well, three if you count Crypto King. Three criminals. He had Eddie, the professional con man, who is just a blatant con man. I don't know how anyone on Logan Paul's team could hear this guy's story and think for a second he's real. He claimed to have won the fucking 2018 Super Bowl at the Philadelphia Eagles and claimed to be like a hacker responsible for AOL hacking and also a CIA operative and also works closely with billionaires and shit. Like, it takes minutes to deduce that this guy's probably not the real deal. And then, I don't know why he ever teamed up with Jake the Crypto King. That guy is just an actual serial scammer. I hope that he does talk more on Impulsive because, like I said, he didn't tackle specific claims with evidence such as all of the text messages and all of the actual statements from the group meetings that I, I believe Jake the Crypto King provided where it showcased his, like, the whole team's motives behind the project as well as, well as market manipulation and then everything falling apart behind the scenes. He doesn't tackle the handmade art assets being just blatantly false and provably wrong. Apparently, I didn't do the research myself, but from all the evidence, seems pretty cut and dry. He didn't tackle the actual specific claims on the project. He's going more big picture with it, but he focused in on some really small ones, I think. Again, this guy being a scammer and also getting scammed by CryptoZoo doesn't really prove a point other than this one guy is a piece of shit who also got scammed by my project. He lost money on it just like everyone else. He shouldn't have been in your video. And that's fair. Definitely not a good spokesperson giving testimonials if he's also not a good person. But it also doesn't discredit all of the true victims that are there. But he doesn't prove his innocence here either. This is still a project that should have no backers. He hired three fucking criminals to run it with him. There's no amount of background checking. There's no communication. Everyone did lose money on it. There is no reason that this should continue to exist. 
What he should do is apologize to everyone that lost money and just fucking refund their investments. Just eat shit on it and move on. If you want to continue to try and have a good reputation. Even if it wasn't designed to be a scam, which... Again, all of those group chat messages as well as everything provided from Jake, I believe. It seems like from the beginning it was designed to just be a money-making exploit. But even if that wasn't the point, everyone did lose money on it. It is still in a non-functional state overall for the majority of your users. Do you think there is anything Logan can actually take legal action on? I don't think so. I don't see how he could, if I'm being honest. I don't really think there's anything necessarily defamatory about CoffeeZilla's video, and I don't think that's what he's going to go for. He's going to go for the unethical uh, record... Like, uh, I think it is like actually illegal to record a private phone call conversation. He's going to go for that angle, talking about an illegally recorded phone call with his manager. So if he is going for something legal, I think that's the angle he'll take, because he does have a leg there. But as for defamatory, I don't think so, since it was part of just like an actual open investigation that was publicized. Plus, I don't really think you're going to win as a crypto company that actually did have tons and tons and tons of victims that lost money on it. Not in Texas. It's not illegal in Texas. Is that right? I didn't know that. And CoffeeZilla is in Texas. Well, yeah, that's why that would be relevant to this. No, it's probably not about winning. It's probably just about strong arming because Logan has significantly more money to hire a legal team and bully for a long, long time. You're definitely biased, though. I would be. I would have been super open to Logan Paul somehow figuring out like how to prove all of that wrong. It's just the evidence was like pretty tight. It wasn't just like circumstantial nonsense. It was like very thorough investigation, man. That's not bias. That's looking at evidence and seeing. This is, you know, not a lot of wiggle room, but I'm open to hearing. And I heard a couple of decent points. Granted, I don't think they're that strong overall. Like. CoffeeZilla omitted, omitted that one of my core developers is actually a criminal. Like, okay, he, he didn't say that. You are right. He, CoffeeZilla probably knew this guy was a criminal and didn't bother mentioning it. Though I don't think mentioning it makes you look better. In fact, I think it really makes you look worse. You hired him. You did no amount of information gathering or background checking. But you're right. CoffeeZilla didn't mention that. That was omitted. Or CoffeeZilla not... Uh, doing his research enough on this guy being a scammer. Fair enough. That is correct. He is not someone that should have been in the testimonials as one of the victims, though, even though he probably did lose money on it. It's a scammer who got scammed. It doesn't discount the rest of the people who gave testimonials that did lose money, but you focused on one who is a bad person, apparently. That's fair enough. Yeah, CoffeeZilla probably shouldn't have had him in the testimonials. And then the egg hatching thing. I believe there was evidence about the egg hatching not being functional fully when the game launched. And I think he, in CoffeeZilla's video, he did say, like, they did eventually try and get that working, but it's still not in a fully functional state. But those are, like, the only points. And then this call being illegally recorded, which apparently is not illegal in Texas. And then he confirms what CoffeeZilla confirmed about Jake stealing... Eddie stealing, and Jeff and Logan never selling. He confirmed that. So CoffeeZilla was right. I think that was it, right? There wasn't anything else. Yeah. And then it was just about him, like, saying, we're working our ass off, it's gonna come out, it's, it's not a scam, without providing any information on what exactly they're gonna do differently. You're gonna hire more criminals? It's just scammers scamming scammers. Yeah. That's exactly what it was internally. Again, another thing he didn't address was all of the group chats that are now public. He didn't deny them either, he just legitimately didn't even bother talking about it. Or any of their internal memos about market manipulation. It's enough for his fans who didn't watch the coffee video, though. Yeah, it, like, it is going to be enough for the fans, and it's going to be enough for the crypto zoo backers who are still holding on. To that, like, false hope, but... Uh... Here, just going through Twitter takes real quick. I, this seems kind of representative of most of the, the hive mind on it, so I'm just going to read it. Though this is just one person's opinion, kind of echoed in different ways. Logan and his team need to be held accountable for picking horrible partners, but to say he scammed when he didn't sell is insane. Just because he didn't sell doesn't mean that it wasn't a scam. Tons and tons of people lost money, and his internal partners did sell, making millions. Who's to say Logan Paul wouldn't have sold if it kept going? 
plus all of the group chat that, that is now public, seems to have confirmed that this whole thing was just all about making as much money as possible and as quickly as possible on a bad idea. Still a scam, just because it didn't sell doesn't mean it's not a scam. You 100% was going to sell if it didn't happen. Yeah, but that's just speculation. I, I don't know. I don't know if he would have sold. I will say the reason, uh, one thing that definitely contributed to not selling is after Jake sold and made $6 million, the, prank, or the price pfft, right in the shitter. So obviously he wasn't going to sell too. And then Eddie sold $1.7 million and then pfft, deeper into the shitter. So clearly he wasn't going to be selling regardless. I don't know if his intention was to sell, but it seems like the intention with the project, based on all of the group chats, was to make as much money off the audience as he could for the whole team. Didn't he make money from the egg sales? That I still don't really know. Even in CoffeeZilla, I was scratching my head because I, I don't know. I don't think you can say for sure whether or not he himself pocketed money off of the egg sales. That, I think, is still just kind of tough to say for certain. Watch the CoffeeZilla video now. It's a lot different with this context. What the fuck? What co He didn't prov Context? What are you talking about? I guess in this one part where this guy giving his testimonial is untrustworthy. But other than that, it doesn't change the lens. The evidence is still there. He didn't tackle any of the evidence other than saying that one of them was unethically and illegally gathered through that recorded phone call. And that's really about it. Or that Z that he was talking to was actually a criminal that... Logan hired. Like, it doesn't change the lens. How the fuck is Logan still sticking with Jeff? That I don't know. Jeff just sounds like an actually observable stup stupid man. Like an actual stupid idiot. I don't know why he keeps Jeff around. I don't. I really don't. I actually think Logan had no idea who was being hired. It was all Jeff. But Logan's gonna still take the fall for it. Because he just let Jeff run rampant like a dog off the leash. Hired two criminals, and then those criminals hired a criminal. So then, eventually, they hired all three fucking criminals. <laughs> like, I don't know why he keeps them around. He didn't say how it was a scam. I am, like, I actually think it, a lot of children have too much easy access to the internet. What do you mean, explain how it was a scam? <laughs> like, what do you mean? The method of scamming was gathering as much money from people, talking about how fun this game is and how you can play to earn money on this game. And then the game comes out. The game isn't in a functional state for a while. Maybe it is now, perhaps. Logan seems to insinuate that it is functional. But regardless, it is worth nothing, meaning you did not play for a while. And now when you do play, you don't earn. So you just lose money. However, his team made, in total, $7.7 .7 million off of selling called pump and dump now logan and jeff didn't sell that is true that didn't happen but just because they didn't sell doesn't mean it wasn't a scam there is a group chat where they were talking about money making ways through the crypto space and copying a certain project that was very lucrative and the entire conversation was always about making money off of logan's audience they then even get into market manipulation tactics talking about what's an acceptable amount to sell on any given day to not influence price too much it's a scam. That is a scam. I don't know why I needed to break it down into the cliff notes for you. I don't, I, I, I don't see why that was necessary. But I hope we're all on the same page now. Now, Logan Paul is denying that this was ever the case. So he's not, like, apologizing to all of the people that lost money or anything. He's saying that with this guy stealing the code, it was a huge setback, and there's just been so much going on behind the scenes, and then Jake tanking it, and then Eddie tanking it. It's just been hard to rebuild, but he's been working super hard to bring it back. But he still is missing the big problem. Nothing was communicated to the buyers. They have been left in the dark for over a year. Logan Paul has made two Discord messages in a year. One of them was, yo, and the other was, I'm sober, shake my head. He made a third Discord message two days ago, right before posting this video. There is nothing being conveyed to all of those people that lost a ton of money. So even if it's not, if even if Logan Paul never thought it was a scam, there were very real victims that lost very real money on this project, all because of him. Do you think Logan will actually follow through with his court thing? Yes. I think 100% Logan Paul will follow through with the court thing. He has significantly more money than CoffeeZilla. He doesn't even need to win in court. He just needs to bully him. And I think that's exactly what he's going to do. 100%.
Why do you think why do you think Coffee declined Logan's invite to the podcast? Because you got invited right before Christmas. <laughs> and then again, right before New Year's. Who's gonna want to fucking fly to LA for that on his podcast? Of course he's not doing that. Coffeezilla also reached out saying, hey, let's just do it over a video call. Why did Logan decline a video call, which is significantly easier and more convenient? So we can try and intimidate him. There's plenty of reasons not to go on Logan's podcast to talk about it. I think the obvious one, Logan con completely controls what actually makes it into the final cut. Like, there's nothing to be gained there. Why not just do it over a video call on a stream? It, literally anything. CoffeeZilla offered just a full video voice call so they can talk about it, which is very convenient for both parties. Logan Paul... Well, Logan Paul didn't even mention Dink Doink. <laughs> like, yes, I know. We all know Logan Paul has had some very shady shit. But this was focused on CryptoZoo, and he didn't address the evidence-backed... the major Well, all of the evidence-backed claims from CoffeeZilla. He focused on just a couple of nitpicks, really. And then the broader the broader picture of I didn't sell and crypto zoo is not supposed to be a scam and I'm committed to making it real and work and fixing it. He just posted the crypto zoo's Twitter for the first time in a year. Yeah, the timing is really weird. That that is so odd that now all of a sudden he's all in on crypto zoo despite radio silence for a year. Just a coincidence, I'm sure. You seem pretty biased. I'm so tired of that word losing all meaning. One side had evidence, the other side didn't. It's just that simple. I was very open to hearing how Logan Paul would attack the evidence, like maybe there was holes in it, maybe things are misconstrued or misrepresented, but he didn't. He didn't even address the things with actual substantial evidence. That's the whole thing. The word bias has lost all meaning right now. He discredited a witness, and that doesn't discredit him from being a scam, a victim of the scam, by the way. How many times do I have to say it? This guy, Emilio, can be a scammer himself, have a shady past, and still have been one of the many victims of CryptoZoo. It's not mutually exclusive. But yes, I agree. He should not have been in the testimonials for the victims. In fact, if he wasn't, Logan Paul would only have a single point in this video. <laughs> Which is, you recorded my manager being a fucking idiot without his permission, and it's illegal somewhere. There would be absolutely no grounds at all for defamation. Plus, as he even mentions, he never made any money off CryptoZoo, allegedly. And he even says he never plans to make any money off CryptoZoo. When it comes to a defamation case, you have to prove damages. What was damaged? A reputational damage, I guess? Kind of a stretch, though, because the reputational damage is from the project failing, not so much CoffeeZilla's video. You would easily be able to argue that the actual reputational hit came from delivering or never delivering a product. I, I just feel like that's going to be tough. I like how he calls CoffeeZilla's videos an oversimplification when it's three parts of a year-long investigation and you release seven minutes and don't debunk any of his claims. Yeah, he was the one that oversimplified the situation. Before being done with the topic, there is one more thing I'd like to say, and it's right if here. I can help understand. Uh, for years of personal reform, going through trials and tribulations, and busting my ass to evolve into a person that I can say I'm actually proud of, you led the charge to drive and monetize a narrative telling millions of people that I'm a fraud or I tried to scam my audience. So, even before CoffeeZilla made this video, every single one of the investors of CryptoZoo felt like they had been scammed by a fraud named Logan Paul. CoffeeZilla told their story. They are real victims, lost real money on your project. And CoffeeZilla told their story and tried to give an explanation for what happened. This was not CoffeeZilla that started this. Even if one of those victims is shady himself, that doesn't discredit all of the other very real, normal audience members that lost money on your shit. Jake did nothing wrong, he was screwed over. There is no such thing as a Crypto King meat writer. There's no way I just read that. That has got to be a bot, no shot. That man is a serial scammer. Do I feel bad for Logan Paul and his team getting used by Jake? No, it's scammers scamming scammers. But Jake the Crypto King is legitimately one of the slimiest men the internet's ever had. 
He bounces from Pokemon scams right into NFT scams. CryptoZoo, like, the guy sucks. <laughs> but at least in this case, he scammed scammers for the most part. But that also did have the impact on normal, real people who also lost money. So fuck him. He's not some Robin Hood who stole from the rich and gave to the poor. He stole from the rich and the poor and kept it for himself.